I mean, the dialogue was a little bit difficult. I remember there was one line that I just begged him to take out. And you it's remember once, the line? Yes. Boy, I'll never forget it as long as I live. I sometimes dream about this line. It was just coming upon the exploded planet of the princess, right. Alderaan, and it's Alderaan. All totally been blown away. And Harrison says, look, kid, I've uh, done my part of the bargain. When I get to an asteroid, you, the old man, and the droids get dropped off. And my line was... But we can't turn back. Fear is their greatest defense. I doubt if the actual security there is any greater than it was on Aquilae or Solus. And what there is is most likely directed towards a large-scale assault. <laughs> and I thought, who talks like this, George? The closer I get to you, the worse it gets. I'm haunted by the kiss that you should never have given me. The best description of George Lucas came from Armand White. He said, George Lucas is a director who achieves the impossible while botching the basics. Now, it's a little difficult to say what that impossible is, but we'll give it a try. No, do, or do not. Well, let's start with the botched basics then. One in particular seems pretty obvious. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. Yeah, this video is about his dialogue. If you're suffering as much as I am, please tell me. So what have people actually said about George Lucas's dialogue? Well, White says it ranges from competent. You seem a little on edge. Not at all. To cruddy. I haven't felt you this tense since, since we fell into that nest of gum dogs. Another beloved film critic, Roger Ebert, said that Lucas has a flat utilitarian style of writing dialogue. We will find out who's trying to kill you, Padme. I promise you. Every reviewer seems to have their own word for this approach. But we can be fairly sure that no one would call George Lucas a master of dialogue. No. I shouldn't have done that. When he received his AFI Lifetime Achievement Award, Lucas called himself the King of Wooden Dialogue. Which is, uh, actually, it's hard to say whether that's a good thing or not. Good job. Wooden dialogue, fair to say, typically not a good thing. It means dialogue that is stiff and awkward in movement or manner. Suddenly I'm afraid. This is my first assignment on my own. I am too. That's our George. His characters always declare their feelings in the bluntest possible way. If an item does not appear in our records, it does not exist. Excuse me. I'm in charge of security here, milady. And this is my home. I know it very well. That is why we're here. If we wanted to, we could probably just chalk this up to a stylistic homage to some of his inspirations. We're safe. We just passed the death zone. Death zone? Yes. It was the only thing I feared. There it is, R4. Right where it should be. Our missing planet, Camino. <laughs> Certainly, he knows what he's doing. He'll tell you himself, his dialogue is pretty corny. It's presented very honestly. It isn't tongue-in-cheek at all, and it's really played to the hilt. If nothing else, that's pretty self-aware. So, why doesn't he fix it? I'm good at fixing things. Always was. The thing is, when you listen to what he says about it, Lucas doesn't seem to think about dialogue the way most other writers do. He has repeatedly referred to it as a sound effect, or just part of the overall soundtrack. Some people have taken this to mean that George Lucas just doesn't care about dialogue. The problem with that conclusion is it doesn't do justice to the way Lucas uses sound effects. The Star Wars saga contains the most iconic, instantly recognizable sound effects in movie history. They're always clear, always distinctive, Master, destroy us. and a huge part of the storytelling in these movies. Gun, they've stopped. Sometimes he'll even use dialogue as a sound effect. Say about 20 guns, some on the surface, some on the tower. <laughs> or sound effects as dialogue. So Lucas is saying that he writes dialogue in much the same way. He's not so much looking for clever lines as he is clear tones. 
Whether that's intimidation. Your lightsabers will make a fine addition to my collection. Mystery. After all these years, we were beginning to think you weren't coming. Incompetence. Uh, that doesn't compute. Uh, wait, uh... Irritation. That was some shortcut, Anakin. He went completely the other way. Hatred. They're like animals. And I slaughtered them like animals. Devotion. It's only because I'm so in love. Her grief. I miss you. So much. The feelings of Star Wars are so clear you could probably watch it in a foreign language and still understand everything that was happening. Now, none of this is to say that the words just don't matter. They may be clunky, but there's a lot of meaning given to each and every phrase. Like this parallel between Anakin and Dooku. He sort of lays out his ambition. I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. And you'll see later on, his ambition and his dialogue here is the same as Doku. As you see, my Jedi powers are far beyond yours. Doku is kind of the fallen Jedi, so we can see that that's where this is going to lead. There's all sorts of examples of this in the Star Wars movies. Some of it very obvious. Why do I get the feeling you're going to be the death of me? We will watch your career with great interest. And some of it a little more subtle. I can't breathe. They'll do their job well. I'll guarantee that. Well, if droids could think, there'd be none of us here, would there? Of course, it takes a certain kind of actor to bring this particular style off well. It seems to help if you've played Dracula before. It may be difficult to secure your release. Evacuate? In our moment of triumph? Or if you just kind of look like him. Do you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. But even the lines given to Lucas's younger actors. So this is how liberty dies. With thunderous applause. Have a way of sticking in people's consciousness long after they left the theater. And to dismiss Lucas's dialogue outright is to ignore how quotable these movies have proved to be. Hello there. This is where the fun begins. Do it. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Star Wars sticks with us. And it sticks with us not in spite of its botched basics. Your focus determines your reality. But because of them. The shroud of the dark side has fallen. Because it's not afraid to be dorky and awkward and wear its heart on its sleeve. You are in my very soul. And because it takes the same person who wrote this. Are you an angel? To write this. You are the chosen one. I feel lost. Lost? What do you mean? Who could have done this? I'm not going in there with two Jedi. I will not let this Republic be split in two. Like the map, all of them. This is Lucas's Impossible, and you can't get it any other way. Thanks for watching. You know the drill. If you like it, subscribe and share, and leave a comment sharing your favorite line of dialogue from the prequel trilogy. Until next time, be easy.